Um, okay, I think we have some music for, for the relax. And uh, I'm Jerry uh, from Panasonic. Uh, actually, I joined uh, AGL in 2020, so that is just uh, the period of uh, COVID. So actually, this is my first time to join AGL AMM face to face. And with this fancy stage, actually, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, okay, uh, so today, um, actually, I'm really glad to give an overview uh, introduction of the, uh, this new expert group, Software Defined Vehicle Group, which was uh, merged from the original uh, Virtualization Expert Group and Container Expert Group. Um, so on behalf of this new SDVEG, I will introduce how AGL is approaching SDV and what kind of activities uh, that uh, in, in AGL we have already did and what kind of uh, things we would like to do in the future. So this is the general agenda today. Um, so basically this is a session to have an overall introduction of the uh, SDVEG and for the details of the technical insights there will be some separate uh, technical sessions to have a deep in dive. And I will also uh, introduce the, the, the related sessions in the last part of this presentation. Um, so first, let me give some very uh, basic background. I, I think all the people here is very familiar with this kind of things. So, you know, the automotive industry has been uh, come across a huge changes because of this case trend. And there is a lot of uh, uh, additional challenges for the automotive industry, like this kind of safety features, quality, safety, varying uh, harness cost, all these kind of issues uh, related to hardware and the software, and everything will become a big headache for, uh, for the innovation of the automotive. And you can also see that actually uh, the electronic system or say the software parts of the, uh, the, the, the total car has been uh, increasingly uh, important. So I think everyone is very, uh, you, you have heard this word software defined for many places, from many places, many times in the recent years. And what exactly is a software defined vehicle and how to make it possible? Um, actually, so for this software defined vehicle, you, you, you develop the software decoupling from the hardware. So that is uh, exactly uh, to have a software abstracted from the hardware. Okay. Wait a second. There's no <laughs> laser. Yeah, it doesn't work. Either. Okay, okay. Uh, so so we, we we're gonna have <laughs> abstracted uh, from the hardware and also uh, when the software is uh, de decoupled from the hardware and we have a lot of hardwares in the systems, we have a lot of even, uh, I mean, uh, like the virtual machines uh, in the system. So in, uh, interactions between nodes will be very important. So this comes to a, Another important thing called macro-services orchestration, which is uh, uh, important in the more dynamic and uh, consolidated architecture. And last one is that when you have the software-defined vehicle, you would like to have a, a, a fast update uh, features that continuously deliver uh, user values uh, like, uh, like the, 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 the current smartphone, or even as uh, Monana mentioned, it's uh, even beyond the, uh, the smartphone. So continuously updatable uh, is important. So we can actually simplify the, the word software-defined vehicle to, to the three parts, abstracted, or say the virtualization, and the microservice orchestration, and continuous update, which is mean for the ODA and the DevOps, for example. So in a word, actually, from architectural point of view, the key point of software defined vehicle, as I mentioned, uh, probably is uh, uh, the, 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 the three points I mentioned before, and that is exactly this SDV expert group is uh, working um, about. 
And when we, we, we look at the, the, the general trend of the, uh, the automotive industry, so uh, traditional architecture, we have uh, well, hundreds of uh, ECUs in the cars, which uh, has a lot of uh, uh, ECUs and the harness, which uh, give a, a big problems when the software uh, components and when the uh, features of the automotives uh, is becoming more and more important. And, um, and now actually a lot of OEMs has been uh, moved to the domain architecture to integrate uh, uh, ECU to some domain controllers. And uh, uh, this has been very uh, popular in the current uh, uh, automotive. And finally, actually, uh, uh, some OEMs and uh, uh, organization has already uh, digged into the, the, uh, the future possibility for the zone architecture, which we all can also can see the high performance community computer to have a more uh, centric but dynamic architecture uh, that uh, uh, can, can, can really decouple the software from the hardware and has the dynamic behaviors of the applications and software across multiple uh, hardware components. Um, so as Dan has mentioned, actually um, from the very beginning of the, the AGL, so it has already uh, followed the principle of the software defined. So this is the, exactly what AGL is, uh, uh, per, uh, is uh, pursuing. And uh, in particular, we have two original work uh, group, which is virtualization expert group and container and service mesh uh, expert group. Uh, worked uh, on the um, components that are uh, highly re related to this kind of software-defined vehicle. And for the word DG, so basically it, uh, uh, it was uh, basically to have this kind of uh, common device virtualization framework with Verdell to decouple the software implementation from uh, diverse hardware targets hypervisor environment, non-hypervisor environment, multi ECU environment, and even the cloud native environment to achieve this kind of environment parity across different um, hardware uh, situations and across vehicle variance generations and uh, deep development uh, environments. And for the the original container EG, it was a expert group uh, which is uh, um, contributing in, in discovering the workload orchestration with AGL and also enabling enabling the AGL to running on the cloud to uh, have this kind of overall uh, orchestration uh, inside the edge and the between cloud and edge. So. Um, as uh, Dan and the Mizema Song and Wood has, uh, has already announced, uh, to accelerate the, uh, the development process and discussions in the software defined vehicles, we actually have uh, uh, united the expert from the two original expert group to this uh, unique and uh, powerful uh, software defined vehicle expert group. Um, so that we can uh, really uh, have the, to, to drive forward the AGL development towards SDV with the a even greater speed and efficiency. So let me uh, first uh, probably let me give an, an, an introduction about the, the past activities in the AGL related to SDV. Uh, especially for the virtual and the cloud uh, August workload orchestration. And after that, uh, related to this kind of uh, past activities, how we would like to approach uh, in the future in this new SDVEG. So first part is the achieving the environment parity with the device virtualization. So um, I would just uh, go through some, uh, some, some basic background for the automotive industry. Um, it is very complicated because, uh, because uh, there are a lot of peripheral devices was used in the, is used in the uh, automotive, uh, unlike uh, the server world. 
Um, and also, for example, for different OEMs, uh, you have a different uh, type of uh, displays, a different layout, a different resolution, different size. Everything probably can be uh, fragmenta fragmented. And uh, even uh, with, the, with the single OEM, that you, uh, for, for different uh, vehicle variants or different uh, vehicle generation, you may probably have a completely different layout. Uh, of the, the, the hardware. On the other hand, uh, the traditionally, if you have a ad hoc architecture of the, uh, the, the devices with the uh, corresponding systems, um, the application, you, you need to decide, okay, which place I, I should allocate my applications to get the, 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 the better performance, to get the, the, the lowest uh, uh, harness lungs. So this kind of headache has been always uh, been uh, in the automotive world. So this kind of, so in order to solve this, we, we, we definitely need a, a, a isolation uh, of the application, from the application to the devices. So even with the, uh, the, 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 the single system or say the, the integrations with the hypervisor, similar problems, uh, will also happen because you just can consider the VM can be a, a virtual ECU, but you still need to, 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 to map the relationship between the application and devices, and uh, that it c will be also another uh, headache for the existing industry. So when coming to the uh, very hot topics uh, like the cloud native, uh, which is uh, from another angle, this kind of issues need to be solved because the, you know the devices of the, the the cloud are really really quite different from the uh, edge hardware. So a general abstraction is also need on the cloud. So thus, we need a common device virtualization framework to decouple the, uh, the, the software from the diverse hardware environments, uh, the centralized uh, ECU or, or, or the distributed ECUs or even the cloud environment. So from the application point of view, we need to have the, the real physical devices implementation from them. And we need to have this kind of virtualization uh, or say the device virtualization framework, uh, commonly uh, for, for the applications so that they can communicate with this kind of uh, uh, virtual interfaces and no matter what kind of underlying hardware uh, devices it is. So this is the, the, the general needs for the automotive industry that why we need to have this kind of common device virtualization framework. And this is exactly actually uh, one idea of the software, software defined vehicles to decouple the software from the hardware. Um, so, so generally, as I already mentioned, overall of uh, device virtualization in AGLs, we have uh, utilized the word IO, uh, standard uh, uh, protocol uh, framework for the device virtualization to apply to multi uh, to different uh, scenarios of the, uh, the, the, the automotive use cases. So um, I, I think this has been uh, shortly already introduced in the keynote. So with the originally, without a standard interface, you will, uh, will come across a lot of uh, issues on fragmentation and dependency. And this will be a not, not healthy for the uh, automotive device virtualization. And uh, so luckily, we um, have this word IO from the server world, as, uh, as we uh, already uh, covered in the keynote part that HL can be a really good incubator uh, for the, uh, bringing the other uh, open source technology to the automotive world and to make it a more uh, mature solutions, which is more um, generic for the automotive use cases. And for this word IO, that is the exact the use cases that we have applied to the AGL so that it can be used as the common interfaces 
um, for the uh, different hypervisors, and uh, this can be uh, enable a healthy computation and efficiency uh, on on the uh, software development uh, above the vertical uh, ab uh, abstraction. So. So uh, generally, we have already uh, covered the most of the multi uh, uh, multimedia uh, use cases that are already um, uh, useful uh, for the uh, AGL use cases. And for the more uh, devices, I think that is uh, also based on the current uh, uh, later discussion in the SDV, we probably can uh, dig into more use cases like ADAS or, uh, or some uh, other um, scenarios. Um, as mentioned in the previous part, actually Wordtel is a very powerful um, framework which is not only uh, e uh, limited to the hypervisor environment, it can be also defined as a well-defined uh, uh, device help, uh, even for the non-word uh, uh, scenarios. So this is uh, also can can helps that uh, that AGL um, can um, have reduce the fragmentations across socks. Um, uh, even you don't use the hypervisor environment. So similarly, um, as the cloud native has been really really popular, if we can use the world as a common interface with the cloud based AGL. Uh, we can really enhance the in interchangeability between the cloud AGL and the native AGL. You can uh, just uh, develop and test in the cloud and uh, uh, the deploy the completely same binary uh, to the native or say the real hardware. So thus we can really maximize the commonality of the AGL software among shocks, virt virtualization environment, non-virtualization environment, uh, cloud or edge, and those kind of different environments. So regarding this word of, of non-hypervisor environment, so we basically has already uh, complete the, the, uh, the, 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 the basic uh, design and architecture and uh, have some real implementation with uh, block uh, random generation and input. And uh, we are going to continue the work to support more devices. And we can, we are also, so planning for the uh, extending the use case uh, from single ECU to multi ECU and cloud native, for example. So for the technical details about this uh, part, uh, please uh, uh, kindly uh, join this sessions tomorrow by Michelle and Timos from Virtual Open System. He will, uh, they will give you a a, a really um, uh, fruitful technical discussions for the uh, the non-hypervisor or dial related uh, topics. So on the other hand, what we also uh, extend the original word IO is that we um, make it uh, available across the module ECU and we call this to be the unified HMI technology, uh, which you can have an integrated control of the multi-display on the distributed uh, SOC systems. So as mentioned uh, in the previous part, if you, the, the, the traditionally, if you, uh, you, 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 you have the display with the hardware, you will have a, 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 a strict restriction on the ECU and the function display uh, location and uh, uh, relationship uh, which can, can probably causing a harmful impediment for the cockpit UX. You will have really a, a ad hoc uh, interlinkage. But with this uh, general virtualization of the overall uh, displays uh, uh, in, inside the cabin, we will have a full flexibility of the, on the ECU and the function display. Uh, which can uh, enabling the faster uh, uh, cockpit UX uh, innovation. So generally, uh, unified HMI, as I mentioned, is extended from WebDAO GPU and thanks to the, uh, the, the beautiful architecture of WebDAO GPU to have the front end and the back end, we actually separate the front end uh, into the, uh, to this uh, socket, which we call the sender. We, where is the application is running, 
and uh, we put the backend to the uh, receiver or say the, the here SOC B or VMB or SOC C or VMC uh, which will receive the, uh, the, uh, the OpenGL commands so that it can be, uh, the applications can be uh, running on the SOC A but rendered on SOC B or SOC C. So for the technical insights of the unified HMI, um, uh, similarly, please also uh, come to the uh, detailed sessions about this uh, tomorrow. Uh, and from uh, uh, Murakami-san from Panasonic. The last thing is that we um, also uh, is starting to dig into the cloud native environment use cases for the WDL. Uh, and uh, enabling the AGL to running uh, natively on the AWS Grav Graviton uh, through this world of interfaces. So we have already uh, collaborated uh, uh, with each other uh, in the past to enable some uh, demo uh, parts and we are also uh, considering to have a contribution about this part, uh, hopefully this year. Um, so another important direction uh, in the uh, original uh, AGL is the uh, workload load orchestration and also the cloud part, which was uh, uh, originally uh, worked from the, uh, the container EEGs. Um, uh, so something is a little bit uh, overlapped with the previous sessions. They are, um, are, are trying to provide the AGL AMI on the AWS Graviton so that everyone can uh, just uh, uh, build, the, build and test the AGL on the AWS Graviton like Linux or Ubuntu or any other uh, operating system variants in the AWS. Um, on the other hand, uh, so the original container EG was also digging into the uh, workload orchestration uh, across the different node on the edge, uh, in, in one SOC or multi SOC or multi ECU, and also the the, the, the cloud and edge, uh, and edge, how they can uh, orchestrate it from uh, with each other, how can they can uh, deploy with each other. So this kind of thing uh, has been uh, started uh, uh, from last year and. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, continued work in the uh, new uh, SDV EG. So I think uh, we have a, a, a general introduction on what exactly uh, AGL is approaching SDV in the past, and I would like to uh, give a general progress and the plan of this new SDV EG. Um, after actually February, we have some um, some some small progress. Um, so this is the general uh, roadmap we have uh, uh, considered about uh, to, uh, to achieve this kind of uh, uh, SDV uh, terms uh, in the AGL. Um, so we, we, we follow this kind of 5D process uh, and we uh, so discover, define, design, develop, and deploy. And, uh, uh, but even with the discover, define, and design, as the AGL uh, is a, a, a code first com community, we d don't want to block the time here, but uh, we would like to also uh, give some continuous MVPs and uh, um, those kind of uh, moving code, uh, functional code, uh, so that to, for, for the con conceptual uh, evaluation. Um, so generally, we are still uh, we are under the phase of the pr problem discovery, and uh, because software defined vehicle is really really a wide range, and it also um, need a lot of talents and the companies uh, to co work together. So we are also collaborating with other EG members and also set mem uh, also set. Uh, and for example, like ICEG, uh, they are working uh, with the container orchestra, uh, we, we, uh, working with the containers, and we, we definitely would like to uh, to interact with the different EGs to have a overall uh, community level beneficial uh, software defined vehicle architecture. 
Um, so this kind of uh, high level architecture brainstorm and uh, discussion is also happening in chat. And the, as Wood mentioned, the interaction between AGL and uh, Artos is uh, one of the components. So as generally, we uh, have worked out this kind of sheet uh, to, 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 to have the problem discovery and definition on what ex exactly a committee member is thinking about the SDV and what kind of problems should be solved. And uh, so I would like to summarize the, the most uh, interesting topics uh, in the forums, cross VM and SOC issue communication, and including the virtualization here, and the mixed criticality workload orchestration, and HPC, for example, interaction between the AGL with other OS like Artos. And the, the last thing, because SDV is really, really a complicated and wide com uh, component, as uh, uh, Mizawa-san and Murakata-san has already stressed in the keynote speech, uh, we, we definitely need to cooperate with other SDV initiatives and also uh, use AGL as an incubator for the real source code uh, to, to achieve those uh, SDV uh, concept. Um, but as mentioned, uh, AGL is a, a source, uh, is a code first uh, community. So uh, not only the discussions uh, uh, in the previous page, we also uh, have some, some work uh, in, the, in the background to uh, enable this non-hypervisor virtual environment and uh, this multi-issue environment for the unified HMI. As I mentioned, for the details of this uh, two uh, core technology that we have already developed, uh, please uh, come to tomorrow's uh, uh, session. Um, so throughout the AMM, AMM, there are a lot of sessions uh, related to SDV. I give a summarize here, and uh, so, so for example, the, the, the unified HMI and the, um, and the non-hypervisor WordIO, which is uh, uh, on, on, on Thursday, and also uh, the interaction between AGR and Artos uh, from AWS will be uh, on tomorrow. And there will be also a session on the debugging tools for the generalization environment from uh, Yixisong uh, tomorrow. And there will be an overall uh, BOF for the software-defined vehicle topics uh, on Thursday. And I think we have uh, around 30 minutes to, to have a free discussion there. And if you are interested, maybe just uh, uh, come to this room and we can have a follow-up discussion here. And even we can have a, uh, a, a, a uh, we, even we will have a face-to-face -face workshop uh, on the AGL, also in this place, right? No, it'll be on the third floor. Okay, on third floor. Um, for, the, uh, for, the, for the SDV related discussions, it will be in the afternoon. Uh, and uh, if you're interested, please definitely uh, come here to give your comments and uh, uh, questions. Okay, okay, so this is the general uh, introduction of the SDV EG, last but least. So please, please join us to code of this critical technology enabling the software-defined vehicle to define a really bright future for vehicles. So please join us and let's work together. Thank you.